All right, happy new year. Welcome to a new episode of the Cut Pro Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Randy Zellier from BackSportsPage.com. And this week we have, from Impact Wrestling, we have Josh Matthews. Josh used to be the lead play-by-play man now. Now he's a producer behind the scenes. And this is a really good interview. And we're also promoting his micro brawler that has been put out by ProWrestlingTees.com. So check this out. I promise you guys will like it. You guys will get a good sense of how Josh worked his way in from being a wrestler through tough enough all the way into the announced position. A great guy, football fan, Oregon duck and Cleveland Brown fan. We talked a little bit about that. We're going to talk more about that in the future, but right now you don't want to hear me ramble on. Here's Josh Matthews from impact wrestling. All right, back here on the cup of wrestling podcast with uh, impact wrestling's Josh Matthews, Josh, man, thanks for giving me a few minutes today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to talking about all things uh, impact and maybe some uh, some action figures, micro brawlers. Yeah, man. Well, first, let's talk about that, man. Micro brawlers, man. How does it feel to have like your own toy? Like I always uh, always like to ask talent what it's like to sort of have merchandise, certain types of merchandise. But a micro brawler, talk about that. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Like as a as a child of the '80s uh, and and growing up with the big rubber action figures. And then, um, I mean, I had so many of them and, and the ring and everything else, but to, to then have a, a micro brawler of my own is, uh, is really cool. And it's something I had been talking with, uh, pro wrestling tees about for a while. And we, we decided to go ahead and do it. And I was so thrilled that, you know, in four days, uh, they sold out and, you know, Ryan, uh, who, who owns pro wrestling tees, you know, he, he made the investment and I was happy that he got his money back. And that in, in a matter of uh, just a few hours, we're able to move through so many micro brawlers. So, you know, thank you to all the great fans out there who, who purchased one. And I do promise uh, I'm going to get to everybody with Zoom calls and thank yous. And that's something that's very important to me. And I can't wait to talk to everyone who was able to get one. Well, can you talk about the creative process about making these and how it worked? How much input did you have in it? Uh, I mean, honestly, they've, they've, they've done so many at this point that they've really streamlined it. It, it was sending over a few images. Uh, it was them sending me back a, a prototype, and then it was me approving it. And then I think it was 90 days uh, it took to manufacture the 300 of them, and they, they get them shipped back from, from the manufacturer, and boom, that, you know, that's it. And then we put them up, and, and they go. So it's really a a quick and easy process at this point. And, you know, we may do some variants down the line. I teased maybe a tough enough variant with, with, with spike tips or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, it's, it, it was simple. It was easy. It was fun. And it's something that, um, you know, I'd love to do another one down the line. Uh, how's, how's it do for your confidence knowing that it's sold out, but it's probably a little overwhelming, right? It was, it was, it was humbling. It was great. Um, I honestly, when Ryan said, let's do 300, I said, eh, okay. Um, and, and I was just very grateful, you know, in the first nine minutes, we moved through 150 of them and that was like, whoa, yeah, like it was. And then, uh, I think in the first hour we had gotten through 200 and then I was like, okay, I, I you know, cause my wife kept saying, are you going to relax? Are you going to calm down? I was like, well, I want just to make sure that Ryan who invested in these at least gets his investment back. And that was, that was like one of the most important things to me. So, and, and uh, he did, and then they they were gone you know, you know, the last couple went, um, you know, a couple of days later. Well, because not only that, too, with pro wrestling tees, with with merchandise, sometimes it's a hit or miss whether things go up there or not. And when it's up there, if it's going to do well. So, again, like you just said, you might do different variants. Uh, I think that's like for you, it might also open up another door for more revenue for not just micro bros, maybe something else as well. Yeah, and honestly, um, you know, the money that was sent was sent to my wife's pro wrestling tea store because I don't have a store. I don't have any any merch or anything like that. And it was never something that I thought that I would be able to to do or sell or move or put much effort into. So um I I'm not gonna say who, but I did sell more brawlers than a a, a certain very popular group of guys who like to drink beer from time to time. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I, I, that's as far as I'll say, but I, um, uh, they've, they've got a lot of, of different stuff out there, but I was very happy with the, with the outcome. Uh, well, let's, let's transition into impact a little bit. Um, obviously when you came into the company, uh, you already had some broadcasting experience. Can you talk about the impact that you made when coming over to impact, uh, both, uh, on the microphone and behind the announce table? How much of a difference was it from where you were before coming over to Impact, and what were you able to sort of bring to the table at that time that you remember? 
Well, it's interesting because, you know, TNA had, had Mike Tanay and they had Taz and, and, you know, Don West before Taz came in. And so as far as a lead broadcaster went there, there wasn't anything that was missing um, from TNA. I mean, they, those guys were, were doing a phenomenal job. And um, when I came in, it was, um, you know, I remember going to our first production meeting and I told Taz, I said, well, I won't say anything. And he goes, no, trust me. <clears throat> Excuse me. He goes, you, you'll certainly speak up in this meeting. And, and I became quite vocal over the years in those meetings because I did have 20 plus years of experience um, from WWE that I, that I brought over. And, you know, I, uh, because I lived in the Northeast, um, I flew home with, with Vince McMahon uh, quite a bit on, on um, you know, WWE's private plane and never spoke, never said anything, but the things you learn just from sitting and, and listening and, and hearing those conversations, you know, late at night, between Vince and, and his most trusted people, um, you know, I was just hitching a ride home because I needed to be back in Stanford early in the morning to do uh, Canadian slam jams, as they were called <laughs> way back then. Um, so, but uh, just learning all of that and that education that I got, uh, I was able to bring over to Impact. And then um, when Keith Mitchell left to go to AEW and then ultimately retire recently, uh, there was a void in, in our production seat. And as the producer of the show, and, and I asked, you know, more than once, you know, I, I think I can do this. I think I can produce the show. And then the question was, well, who's going to call the show? So, so we, you know, we, 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 we've done our due diligence in finding, you know, who we think is going to be that person. And, uh, and I get to now sit and kind of oversee uh, the whole broadcast as opposed to, you know, the, the, the portion of, of calling it. Can you talk about the role of being a producer and what that entails, how you prep for it and, you know, how, how difficult it can be at times. Uh, the first show that I did uh, last pay-per-view last, pay last year, and I'm not good with names and dates and things like that, but um, we almost didn't, um, I don't want to say we almost didn't make air, but there was, it was getting down to the, to the wire there. And it was like, Oh, it's, it's, it's time to get on the air. And, and we've got some things that need to happen to make sure that that happens. And, and, and we did. And, and that was kind of like a, you know, um, and um, it just a, uh, the the thrill you can't really replicate that. And then there was some things happening where we weren't getting um, some things done that needed to get done. And I was telling our hosts for the pre-show, like, hey, we don't have these item numbers. We're gonna go to here to here. And it's just it's 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 in that game. You know, it's it's you know, as the the coach on the field to call the plays or to call the audibles or to you know let the team know okay we're going to go here now instead of there and to try to keep everybody um as as honest as you possibly can with you know this is what we're doing this is where we're going and and we've only got a, a few seconds left i remember um that first show was the show that my wife madison rain was announcing her i don't know first uh, retirement maybe second or third at this point I can't keep up with how many times she's retired but um and, and i was I, she did it on the kickoff show and i remember telling her like we've got five seconds left. Like you've got to wrap and she's crying because it's emotional. And, you know, that got her right back into it. And, and, you know, it was tough. And I remember saying to our director, uh, Dave, Hattie, like, I'm not cutting her off. If she goes on to the pay-per-view, this is how we're starting the pay-per-view kind of half joking, but um, you know, those are the things that are happening in the moment that, uh, you know, no one ever sees, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to talk about afterwards at the bar. You mentioned your wife. What was it like doing announcing with your wife? Was it uh, a weird experience, a fun experience? Can you talk about that? It was, it was great, but it was also another one of those super stressful moments where, you know, the pandemic hits, we don't have technology in place to have a play-by-play -play announcer and a, a color commentator and a producer all in different locations. You know, this was kind of a, you know, what, what are we going to do? And while Josh and Madison live in the same house, let's, you know, let's have them do it. So, so we did it and she did an amazing job and she was very hard on herself for the few months that she did it, but I thought she did great. Um, but we were also homeschooling a second grader. So outside oh. of my office here, I had a child who we would have to tell, hey, you have to be quiet for a little while because, you know, mom and dad have to go to work for a little bit. And then we have three dogs who, who like to bark. And so, so it was all that chaos going on behind the scenes while we're trying to call a wrestling show. So it was, um, it was stressful. It was fun, and I thought that she did a really good job. Yeah, and it's hard to keep an eight-year-old quiet when you're trying to do that type that type of work. <laughs> it's hard to keep an eight-year-old quiet whenever yeah. anything is going on. Yeah, 
and but when you tell them, hey, listen, kiddo, you've got to be quiet for a little bit. And, and she's a great kid, but um, you know, they get restless. And my office has glass doors. So she would just come and stand sometimes and stare and, and kind of like, hey, you guys done yet? I, you'll appreciate this. I had uh, I had Saquon Barkley on for for an interview spot, and my my uh, eight year old stepson came down and goes, comes right over while, while he's on the screen. I'm doing the little good look, and he goes, "Is that Saquon?" Just like <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like that. It's like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like hey, he one took of those. a shot, though, right? I mean, no, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good thing my editor was able to edit that piece out. But you know, it was still. You <laughs> but um, you know, it's funny too. You mentioned the pandemic and producing television and and and, and broadcast and commentary. How difficult with the pandemic was it to making sure everything lined up the right way? Everything was sort of being able to not only being produced the right way, but also with the commentary being in, especially in an arena where there's no fans at that point too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, credit to Anthem Sports and uh, and everybody, really. I mean, I, I am a, you know, a lot of people say that I have been planning for a pandemic for 40 years because I've, I've always been a germaphobe. I've never really enjoyed touching. Um, I, I have tried to eliminate the quote unquote traditional wrestling handshake uh, with, the, with the fist bump. Um, but, I, I, you know, I remember... Um, having a conversation with Scott Moore about, you know, we're, we're going to go do TV and we're going to do it in Nashville. And, you know, this was when we didn't know anything. So it was, um, it was N95 masks. It was Lysol spray. It was gloves. It was don't stop at a guy. Like we drove my wife and I from Columbus to, to Nashville, uh, six, six and a half hours. Um, but get to the hotel, Lysol, everything. Don't talk to anybody at TV. Food had to be, you know, um, my viewpoints have changed greatly since then, but um, it, it was it was scary, and it, it was one of those deals where you know I, I've always you know works always come first to me, and, and that's something that's been instilled in me from you know my childhood through through my years in in WWE and, and Kevin Dunn, my executive producer for years, put it to me once that I'll never forget: work comes first, everything else will figure itself out. So when the question was, you know will you guys come to, to do these TV tapings? It was like, yeah, of course, and we'll figure everything else out. But it, it was scary. I mean, it, it was, but, um, you know, you saw who was there, and, and I'll never forget who was there and, and, and who wasn't there. You know, it's funny. You look at your career, you have quite a success story from where you started in this business. You know, first got your notoriety with Tough Enough and you worked your way through and became, a, became an announcer with WWE and then over at Impact. What are some of your fine, finest memories of your career? that you can think of off the top of your head? I mean, from a, from a, like from a broadcasting standpoint, I don't really have, I mean, I got to call WrestleMania, which was, which was awesome, which is something that I'll never forget, but, you know, coming to impact, you know, you know, was something that I'll also never forget, you know, that the day that, that WWE and I decided to, to part ways, you know, my contract was coming up and, and I knew that, you know, we were going to part ways. Um, I was told at 9 a.m. in, in Stamford, Connecticut, uh, where I lived at the time. And uh, as I was driving home, I called Taz and Impact happened to be taping in New York at that that same day. And he said, you know, how quickly can you get to New York? And I said, 40 minutes on the train. Uh, so I went from, from Titan Towers to Manhattan. And by 2 o'clock, I had a handshake deal to come and start at Impact. So that, that to me is one of my 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 biggest moments. Cause you go from this low of lows, like, you know, what's going to happen. I was told it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Um, but to have it happen. And then just a few hours later, you know, shake hands with, with people at impact and see, uh, you know, Bob Ryder, who I hadn't spoken to in, in years. And Bob had given me a TNA contract when TNA had first started that I never, you know, that we ripped up and threw away. Cause I went to go work for WWE. So, you know, to see people like that and, and then to go from, you know, uh, you know, crying to, to having this feeling of, of, okay, everything's going to be okay now. So that, that, that to me is, is probably one of my biggest memories in, 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 in wrestling. What was the best advice you were ever given in, in the, in the world of professional wrestling? I mean, it goes back to what I had just said about work coming first. I mean, like it's, there's, you always, have, you know, as I'm a father now and, and an eight-year-old who has a major uh, gymnastics competition this weekend that my wife and I both have to miss uh, to go to work, you know, to, to, 
it started to get harder. Um, but, but, you know, still, still put that first and, and still make sure that, you know, we're, you know, we're making sure that we can do the things that we need to do so she can do the things she needs to do. And, and that's kind of the, the work ethic that, that we're trying to instill in her. Do you have any uh, memories, like you said before, you didn't have any real broadcasting, I know highlights, but do you have any memories from when you were in the ring that you uh, would consider highlights for yourself? I mean, honestly, I didn't have any until our throwback throwdown show, IPWF, from a few weeks ago, and I got to wrestle uh, on the show. And that, to me, was was so much fun. And, and I remember Scott Moore called me and said, you know, we're, we're thinking – Maybe you would wrestle. I mean, of course, yeah, I would love to do that because it's so outside of the box from from what I normally get to do. And you know, at, at most shows I go and and we have our production meeting and and we eat lunch. And Ross Foreman and I will joke around throughout the day and you know and and you know watch football or whatever. And then we do a show. So to to, to be able to wrestle and be in the ring and and do that, you know, that was so much fun. And my wife and I went last night and trained at a wrestling school here in Ohio to get her ready for the pay per view. And, you know, she, we were leaving and she said, I, I saw that you were having a lot of fun. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'll be honest <laughs> with you, you know, 20, 25 years ago, I, I would kill to find a wrestling ring 20 minutes from my house. Um, and, and now to be able to call a school and say, you know, hey, the two of us want to come and, 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 and work out and, you know, to have them open their arms and, and, and that sort of stuff. It's a, it's a great community. Um, I, I love that I've been doing this for as long as I have. And, um, grateful that i get to continue to do it here with josh matthews on the cut pro wrestling podcast josh two more questions for you you mentioned you uh you and ross talk about football and you, you, you like watching football who's your favorite team at this point uh i'm an oregon ducks college football fan and uh unfortunately the cupboard is pretty bare right now uh so we're gonna see what happens but we lost mario cristobal our head coach he went down to miami he took our strength and conditioning coach with him uh, aaron feld so it's going to be very curious to see what happens. We have the uh, number one draft pick going, leaving us, Thibodeau, the, the defensive lineman, uh, to go to the NFL. So that, it's going to be tough. Um, but look, uh, I've been a fan for a long time. I've seen victories. I've never seen a national championship. I've seen many uniform combinations. Uh, but I've never seen uh, us win a national title. So hopefully I get that chance. Um, and, and in the NFL, I'm a, I'm a Titans slash Browns fan. So. Okay, well, you're going to get one of the two in the playoffs, I guess. You know, you're going to get the Titans in there. Losing Derrick Henry is a, is, a, is a pain for them. Yeah, but, I mean, I think, uh, you know, number one seed most likely, um, you know, who, who, maybe. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and then, of course, Cleveland last night with Baker. I have a feeling that Baker's going to end up in a Giants suit for him next year. I have a feeling oh, that's Okay. Gonna, I have a feeling yeah. that my – from what we're hearing, it's going to be an overall out here in New York. So, but um, – yeah, and then the last question for you is, you know, we're going back to the micro brawlers. Um, with the success of this, what other Josh Matthews merchandise would you think that you would want to try and make up? Oh my gosh, that's I never, I would never. Uh, I, I, I <laughs> um, <laughs> put you put you on the spot, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I mean, the micro brawler, like, with it, it did make me think a little bit about, you know, what what else can we do and, and things like that, and. You know, I, 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 I really do enjoy my, my time behind the scenes now. So I don't know if, you know, if, if people, you know, maybe 10 years from now, no one will remember that I was a broadcaster. You know, I think at this point, nobody remembers that I was a wrestler. So um, I, I'm just happy to still be in this, in this world, in this sport and, and, and make a living and pay for my kids' fun and activities. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, let's, let's let everybody know where they can find you on social media. Uh, yeah, at Real Josh Matthews with one T on Twitter and just my name, Josh Matthews on Instagram, also with one T. And um, you can see all the great stars of Impact Wrestling this Saturday night live on pay per view, Hard to Kill at 8 p.m. Eastern with the countdown show starting live free on YouTube at 7 30 from a sold out factory in Dallas, Texas. Josh, thanks so much for the time. Looking forward to the show this weekend. Thank you so much. All right, that was Josh Matthews from Impact Pro Wrestling, and we uh, helping them promote their Hard to Kill pay per view this weekend as well. We're going to see Mickey James fight Deanna Perrazzo, Moose will battle Mark, Matt Cogadono, and W. Morrissey, Chelsea Green, Jordan Grace, Lady Frost, Rachel Ellering, Rosemary, and Tasha Steeles uh, in a six way match, which should be amazing. Jonah versus Josh Alexander, Eddie Edwards, Rich Swan, Willie Mack, Keith, and Rhino 
versus the Good Brothers and Violent by Design. Uh, Inspiration versus the Influence, Trey Miguel, Scott McLean, and Jonathan Grissom versus Chris Saban. All that this weekend, Hard to Kill, courtesy of Impact Pro Wrestling. I'd like to thank Andrew Fumi and the rest of our crew here for the Cut Pro Wrestling Podcast. We're trying to give you new shows every single week. Stay tuned. We have some great guests coming up throughout the rest of the month of January and February. I'm Randy Zellier from BackSportsPage.com, and we'll see you next time here on the Cut Pro Wrestling Podcast. <laughs>